Agents Podcast. Lab Coat Agents, welcome back to another episode of the Lab Coat Agents Podcast. And it is with great pleasure that I get to talk to another dear friend today. And today we are going to bring you uh, content that everybody needs in their business. I don't care if you're an individual realtor, if you have a team, if you have a brokerage, we are going to talk about client events and how to execute them at the highest level. And my dear friend here, Ms. L Mrs. Lana Rodriguez of the Rodriguez Group, Lana Rodriguez Group out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Folks, listen, uh, since May, she's done four, at least four events that she's told me about, the four that I've watched her on, on social media. Uh, one most recently was a trunk or treat. Oh, I, I think it was over 400 people to that one. They had a uh, pumpkin patch event. They had a taco truck event. They had a miniature golf event. And we're talking, they're getting hundreds of people at these events. And mind you, yes, we are in COVID times and she's taking all of that into account. So we're going to talk about a couple of things today. One, just how to crush events, because guess what? We're not going to be in COVID times forever. But two, how to execute at a high level during these unique times. So before we get into all of that, though, welcome to the show, Lana. It's glad to have you here. Jeff, it's my honor. I'm so stoked to be here. I felt like I worked my entire life just to get on this podcast. I want to say sincere thank you to you, Nick Tristan, to all the amazing moderators of the Lab Code Agents platform that contribute daily, provide value, and totally killing it. I love it. The, the energy right there is just infectious. She and I are going to likely just yell back and forth at each other the whole time because we're just going to feed off of each other. So, Lana, I know a lot of the Lab Coat Nation knows who you are, but probably not everybody. And so why don't you give us a little background about who you are? Because you're actually not from the United States originally. So let's go backwards and tell us about who you are, how you got, how you got to where you are, uh, how you've grown your business, and then we'll get into the events. Wow, Jeff, this is a great question. Thank you so much for asking. So yes, I'm an American immigrant. I came to America about 15 years ago from the country of Latvia, very small country part of the Baltic state. And I simply say mother Russia because it's just easier. But yes, uh, the Rodriguez last name comes from my husband. He was born in Puerto Rico, raised in Atlanta, Georgia. And I do speak a little Spanish for some of our audience who is like, do you even speak Spanish? Yes, actually I do. Six year in the business, two first years as a solo agent, uh, brand new to Colorado. Um, my husband was active duty when we moved to Colorado in 2014. I got my license end of that year. Actually, funny, funny story. Husband gave me an ultimatum. Go ahead and get your real estate license and you can start trying try to get pregnant. And uh, that's a long story short. We can come back to that. And uh, little did we know that, um, you know, this, this particular journey from solo agent will grow into the organization we have right now. This year we rocked it with a five full-time agents and two support staff and one remote TC. We have some strategic plans for 2021. It's gonna be our year, just like everyone else is expecting to be their year. And we're gonna grow, hopefully we're gonna double the team in our, do double the team size. And uh, client events, believe it or not, is our bread and butter. Yes, yes, it is. So repeat that for me about the size of your team. So it's you. Uh, is, is Brian still considered a part of the team? He is. He is a founding fella, even though he is merging himself into the commercial division with a different brokerage uh, because it was just a better fit for him. But he's still actively involved. And of course, he's a CFO of my company. But this year, in 2019, we conducted business with five full-time agents, including myself. I was fully in production this year. Even though my ultimate goal is to be out of the production, more of a, on a growth and managerial side, but maybe 2021 will be the year to do that. Um, and if you want, if you would like me to break it down, so I kind of know my strengths and weaknesses because yes, all of the real estate agents think we're the greatest and latest, but no, uh, you have to identify your strength and weaknesses. And my strength, I'm a visionary, I'm a people's person. I do suck at apps, as simple as that. So we finally, actually, last week hired. Our second operations manager, we had somebody for one year and a half and he left us. So we are excited to take up things up a notch operationally. We have a full-time listing manager, two buyer specialists. Uh, my husband, he is focusing on investment properties and now commercial. Uh, I'm a considered main lead generator on the team. And we have 
Full-time videographer, photographer on our team. It's another great investment that I suggest a bigger teams to invest in. And we have a full-time client care manager. Wow. Wow. And, and uh, what was, not to digress too much, but I think this is important because you got into the, first of all, you know, you're, you already have a, probably a little bit of a handicap compared to those of us who are born and raised here, right? There's a learning curve. Uh, but then you just got into the business at the end of four, let's just say the beginning of 15. So 2015 is when you became an agent. That's not even a full five years yet. And here you are with this uh, pretty good sized team. What kind of a business will you guys do just to give it some context in, let's just say 2020? Sure. Great question. So this particular year, 2020 with all its ups and downs and COVID and whatnot, we're going to do a little over 200 transactions. Wow. Okay. Uh, our goal was uh, clearly over 250 because last year we did 230 transactions. And if I may add to, for our dear audience listening and watching right now, this is all referral referral deals. I do not pay for advertisement. I do not partner up with Zillow. I do not partner up with no online paying lead platform. Everything that comes to us for buying or selling or investing, it comes through our sphere. And most of our sphere is our clients. And of course, I've been networking since the last few years within the Lapco community and a couple other events I attend, like High Profess Sales Summit with Carrie and Dan. And uh, I, I, I love connecting with the fellow professionals and referrals come from there as well. I love it. I love it. And that's, and that's really important to point out. Uh, all of those, I mean, she's doing over 200 transactions a year. She's done it now two years in a row. And all of it is sphere-based. I mean, to me, that's what we all want. I mean, we, it's attraction based. That's what you do. That's what you're great at. And that's what I want to talk about. And obviously one of those things is the client events, but before we get to that, um, before we go deep on that, what are the other pillars that you would say are the drivers to your business besides obviously the client events? Uh, we all know, or if you don't know, uh, TikTok is becoming one of them. Social media in general, Lana crushes it on TikTok. You should absolutely go follow her. But what are some of the other channels that you would call or pillars you would call uh, that drive your business since you're not buying leads? Okay, so great question. So TikTok, yes, uh, you know, TikTok is a different conversation. Maybe we should record another podcast about that. Um, but even though yesterday, Jeff, you saw me tag, I have not been active on the platform. I have to admit I've been slacking because my mind is just not right there and you cannot create when you're not coming from the heart. And the, this person emailed me, I saw you on Lana, I found you guys on Lana's TikTok and I wanna buy a house. And uh, I posted it in our brand builders group. And it's, it's a social proof, friends. It, it, it works. It works. Anyway, for part-time creators like myself, I know you do it on a regular basis. And I absolutely love following your content and your vlogging style. I admire that. When I get my new iPhone, I'll, I'll get on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> but OK, so another thing that works really well for us, I, 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 I'm focusing primarily on our clients and on my agent relationships with agents out of state. My husband, Brian, he went to the military academy. And uh, he, when he got out of the army, it was a quite a bit of a transition for him. So he was uh, thinking long and hard, how can he start also, you know, feeling, feeling like he's knitting out to his community. And he founded his first West Point, West Point, it was his school, West Point Real Estate Conference. And this year, it was the second year we hosted it. Last year was the first time. And uh, it was, it was doubted by many and supported by few, but he had a vision and he made it come true. Look, I was a poet and I didn't know it. Haha. -ha. And uh, believe it or not, about 40 transactions came from that particular niche. Wow. He, I, when he told me he wants to do it, I'm like, well, okay, you can try. And we, have about, we had about 40 attendees. We had 50 attendees this year, but we have to cap it out because of the COVID regulations in, in Colorado. And uh, he just created it. He believed in himself before anyone believed in him. And I was like, I'll take 40 extra deals. And I know it's going to multiply by, by next time he's going to host his conference. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, so you would, you would uh, probably chalk it up to social, uh, a, a, niche, a niche on the military side, which is really, really smart. And then, of course, the client events. Is there anything else that we're missing just before we, before we go deep down that rabbit hole? Well, I want to I point out to all our dear audience that the agent relationships are crucial are crucial. And especially if you have a secret in your pocket, like in, in my client events, it's not a secret, but it's kind of is because I don't think anyone in our country is doing it on the scale like we do and adopted it as a system. And if you, if you are an agent listening and there's something that really, really works 
for you in your market or in your business, please reach out to people who have podcasts and share with the audience because number one, it's going to get your name out there and people are going to reach out to you. They're going to want to connect and ultimately they're going to remember you as a professional in your marketplace and refer your business down the line. So that has worked excellent for me. I love that you just shared that because I think there's a lot of successful people that think what they're doing is a secret. Folks, there is no secret. Somebody else is doing what you're doing at some level, maybe even a bigger level, other places. And Lana and I can both attest to this where we hang out in the same circles with a lot of the same like really successful people. And really successful people that we've found are all willing to share. I mean, you and I, have we've been molded into that, right? And now we just share. The reality is, is most people aren't going to execute at the same level that we're teaching. And that's why we're not intimidated. But you shouldn't even be intimidated. There's enough business for us all to go around. There's not one agent that can handle all of the business in the entire United States or even in one market. And so what Lana says is so true. And it has, it has bared fruit for you because you are sh- giving gives back, gets back, right? It's, it's a reciprocal thing. And so being a part of lab code agents and being a part of these groups and, and local uh, uh, chamber events and, and BNIs, and there's so many different things you can do. I love what you said, like, go get yourself on podcasts. Most podcasts are looking for guests. Go ask to be on them. Tell them you have something to share and watch what happens. And I'm so glad you shared that. That was awesome. No, um, dude, absolutely. And I, I truly believe a uh, real estate community all around US needs to come together and work towards this common goal, which is bettering our industry. And it doesn't matter if you're with a Keller Williams, with EXP, with Remax, you know, if you're independent brokerage, it's we were part of the same pie and we're drinking from the same straw. I love that. That's great. This is great. I love the cliches. You're just firing them off left and right. I just made it up on the That's spot. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're clearly getting a lot of experience doing this and it shows. Uh, so let's get into the meat and potatoes here. Let's talk about why you're here on this show, what you, what you have to share, which is client events. So where did this start? What was your first event and, and what, was, what was your vision with it? Okay. If I may bring up uh, my first real estate mentor was Mr. Brian Buffini. And some of the old school agents will know exactly who he is. He's a great realtor out of California. He, had, he founded his coaching company. And you see, his spiel is um, Coles, Notes, and Pop Buys, right? And uh, when I got into real estate in 2014, I, I took some of his classes. And that concept was really interesting to me. It was very intriguing. Coles, Notes, and Pop Buys. Well, one thing that every agent, new or old, needs to identify is to identify their selling style because we all have our selling style and my selling style is not over the phone. I ultimately got to admit I suck because my accent comes out. I cannot see people's body language. How do they react? Most of the time I get super nervous and they don't understand me and I lose a sale. So I have discovered that I'm not going to be cold calling. I'm not going to be bombarding them with my calls, but pop buys, which is you go visit them, bring them little gifts, you know, handwritten notes, that goes a long way. So I started that way. And for a good, for a good year in 2015, it was my first year of business, uh, 31 transactions. Please keep in mind, I was brand new in Colorado and things I did just to add people to my database, which my database was Facebook back then. And it still is a Facebook. We can talk about it in a minute, how powerful Facebook can be. And by, by the way, you said 31 transactions in your first year in the business. Yes, that's, sir. That's, that's huge. I mean, there's a lot of full-time agents that have been in the business 10 years and only do five. 10, less than that. I mean, so that that's a testament to, to your success, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so 31 transactions. And I was working uh, in the January of 2015. I got pregnant. And I was working until I was 42 and a half weeks pregnant. I was huge. I gained a lot of weight. I was super big. And uh, actually, I was even negotiating when I got my epidural when I was delivering my daughter. Well, to backtrack that, in 2016, my priorities changed. I was still a solo agent. I got a transaction coordinator because I was simply sinking in administrative tasks, mm-hmm. right? And for, for dear agents who are listening, and if you don't have a TC, it's number one hire, transaction coordinator. Number two, an assistant, all right? Because we all want to start growing teams nice and fast, but don't, don't rush to get um, licensed agents added. Don't rush. There's a time for that, but uh, get the admin team first. But my priorities changed. I had a newborn at home. Brian, my husband, was still active duty. In 2016, I did 119 transactions as a solo agent. Wow. I was ultimately blessed, um, ultimately blessed with, with the leads. They were coming. I don't know how I did it. 
But at the end of the year, I was simply dying. I was, I was fat. I was miserable. I probably made the most money I ever made in my life, myself or anyone in my family. But I even didn't see that money. I didn't get to enjoy it. And, you know, I had that conversation with Brian where I told him, dude, oh, I'm, I need to start a team. He's like, no, you just need to get more organized. And I know, you know, Brian, you know how he like comes across. Well, this is what happened with all my client relationships. When I had previously had time to go and pop by and maybe have a lunch. I was a firm believer in breaking bread, go have coffee, breakfast. I had no time for nothing because I even didn't have time to attend to my own child. And that's when I started looking into the concept of the client events. The first client event we did was at this mediocre Brazilian grill here in Cairo Springs. I rented out a small little room of 50 people. Half of them were clients, half of them were sphere. And see, people are like, well, why are you doing this? Like, no one does it. I say, you know what? I, want, I would like to celebrate my year. I want to say it was like end of 2016 when I did that. I want to celebrate my year. I want to thank you guys for being part of this. So it was my first one. And they came out. Uh, I already had a controlled cost because you know you pay per plate there, and everybody ordered a drink, so I kind of knew approximately how much it's going to cost me. And it was great. I had a, we didn't have a videographer, but had a photographer take pictures. Had a Remax balloon all blown up, and I'm like, huh. So that's when it clicked to me. It was still my important people all in one room for let's say three four hours. I touched and talked to every one of them. They left happy, left left full. And they remember me. I was like, "Uh uh-huh. So backtrack the year after, uh, we did pop buys with with Easter baskets. um, Because it was, 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 you know, I'm a kid, Easter, I had a kid, my Easter was a big deal. Mother's Day was coming up. I created the first Mother's Day brunch. Because this is how I'm thinking, how can I relate this event to me in my life? Well, no one is doing anything for the mothers, right? So we created first Mother's Day brunch. As my kid grow older, for example, if this is how the pumpkin patch idea came out, I see all these great families going to these pumpkin patches. And well, number one, I was never invited to go anywhere. I'm like, what if I just throw my own event? And this is how one event was born one after another, one after another. For example, we, we host also Client Appreciation Gala. It's a dot only event. We rent out entire ballroom, free bar, complimentary dinner buffet, DJ, fantastic time. Sometimes we do themes. Great Gatsby was by far the greatest theme. And it also came about, I see all of these couples going to these nice formals, you know, and my husband and I, we were just not invited except the army formal. So I was like, I'm going to do this event for my clients to have a great time. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. I, I didn't know if you were going to keep going. So I, I was, I was, uh, oh, good. Why you, you caught me off guard. Me. I can keep going. This is a, this hey, is good. you're the guest. You're the guest. So, all right. So let's backtrack. Um, before you keep telling us about the events, like what goes into these events? So the first one was almost by accident. It was really just let's celebrate the year and let's invite people. And it was the aha moment. Uh, but it led into, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, it led into Mother's Day. Easter was not an event. It was a pop by. So Mother's Day was the event, which is brilliant, by the way. I mean, listen, folks, think about that. I mean, who's driving the decision uh, on buying a home and, and what agent they're going to work with? I mean, I, I don't care who you are. I would venture to say 80% of the households, if not more, the wife is driving that decision. So, so smart. So what goes into planning these events before we talk more about the events themselves? What goes into planning it? This is perfect. So ultimately, ultimately, Jeff, the, the way I see it and the way our, the audience needs to see it, if you're going to try to do something once a year, most likely the, the feedback, will that tendency rate will be low because they're not used to it and they're not going to understand the concept. Why are you doing this? We do it of the concept of the community. When I came to America, and this is, it's not my sales spiel, it's sincere, sincere where I'm coming from, but it's also a bit of a marketing spiel. When I came to America, it was very lonely for me. When I came to Colorado, instead of selling real estate, it was still lonely because I was an army wife with PCS multiple times with Brian Pryor. So I never had this community what I felt part of, and that's what I built. And every time we have a new client coming in, I explain them, you become part of our community. You have loving family of new friends, your kid's going to have friends waiting for you. You just need to come and trust us and let us take you on, a, on this journey of home ownership, right? And we do it as a system. We do it as an annual tradition. At this point, some of our um, you know, seasoned clients, when we do do something, they're like, hey, is that coming up? Is your Easter brunch still happening next year? They're used to it. 
And the, the main reason why we do this is to stay on the top of their mind. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, even though I do sell real estate and I'm a salesperson at heart, prior real estate I used to be in retail, I hate to be sold. Every time somebody approaches me, hey, can I take you for a cup of coffee for, for a little chat? I'm like, no, number one, I don't even drink coffee. And no, like, no. But if somebody invites me for a great time, maybe where I can bring my spouse, because as you know, daytime is, is, very, is very important. Or if I can bring my family, my little kids, and they can be part of this experience, there's a 90% chance I'm going to show up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I created for my clients. And we do it systematically. Um, I am a visionary. I have these ideas. And it's usually an assistant, executive assistant, who sits down and plans it with me. And she executes. Because if you let me execute anything, it's going to be forgotten and not executed till the last minute. And we don't want that. So it's usually my executive assistant. Now it's our client care manager. And I created a little committee with my team. It's our client care manager, my buyer specialist. She's a rock star and she's a mom of four. So she has that, the brain of, of a mom, of a wife um, that she contributes. And we host one event the same following week. We sit down. I'm like, let's write down pros and cons. What went well? What are we doing next? And when are we doing that? So it's a constant operation, constant operation. And um, this year, for example, 2020 started, we hosted our winter gala. It was uh, hosted in January, 80s theme. One thing, one thing that what I learned from that particular event, usually all my events are on Saturday, on Saturday. And it's more like a formal or a great gatsby where we can just put like a feather in your hair and go have fun. Well, this one I wanted to do, I wanted to do an 80s theme. It was just my vision. And we did it on Friday night and our attendance was cut in half because half of the people, they were texting me like, we're still at work. We cannot make it, you know? So we still had about maybe 150, 175 guests. So we hosted that. We already had prepaid and all plans invites sent for our Easter brunch for Easter, rented out entire ballroom. We're going to have Easter bunny, a uh, complimentary mimosas and that got canceled. So my mind, like if it's canceled, I'm not going to go cry in the corner me and the team got together like what can we do in three days my client care manager called all 400 families of our clients who live in town and asked will they be okay if we deliver pizza and they said sure so we got 280 rcps for that and within three days me and the team we went to costco it was right at that time where there was a shortage of toilet paper. So you imagine there's like this long gas line, excuse my language, to Costco. And there is us rolling out with like freaking 280 pizzas from Costco. And at that, that time, I delivered 50 pizzas myself. The team has delivered approximately the same amount. And right after uh, the Colorado went into shutdown mode, we went into stay home order. And right the minute it was lifted, I'm like, Shit, what are we doing next? Um, so Mother's Day, we had prepaid uh, painting with a twist for that particular May. Of course, it was canceled because in-person events were all canceled. And I'm, you know, got together with my little production team. I was like, what are we going to do? She's like, well, if Cinco de Mayo is coming up and Mother's Day. So we did a mix, rented out a truck, pre got their pre-orders. For Mother's Day, each lady got a bottle of wine. We had actual swag bags for the kids. And we had this assembly of a line driving through, giving them their name in the car, like so super safe. They drive, we get them their talk order, the drive away. And mm. it, it, it was a hit. It was a hit. And it was so amazing to see all the client families. And of course, to backtrack, uh, in June this year, we had a privilege to rent out an um, entire mini golf venue. Once again, thinking how we're going to make it safe, we um, rented out for exclusively for our clients, do the time frames of attendance. So they all had like a booked slot and it's outdoors. So, you know, it, it was, it was pretty safe. Had a food truck there as well for Hold September. Hold on, stop mm -hmm. there, stop there. <laughs> so going yeah. into the year, yes. how many events did you guys like say that this is what we're going to do? What did, what did you allocate for? What was the plan? Are you talking about uh, the event count or budget? Count, how many events? Well, I usually, okay, so for this particular year, 2020, it was an, like, we'd have to play by the year. Yeah, but we going have, into 2020, we didn't know COVID was oh, going to happen. So okay. before the year started, what was your plan? Seven solid events. Seven, seven events. 
Awesome. Seven minutes. Yep. Seven okay. Minutes. So I want to ask you a question. So let's just say somebody listening to this and they're like, first of all, okay, all of this is brilliant. And, and I love the way that you, yeah. that you, you, you shift, right? It doesn't matter what gets thrown at you. You don't, like you said, you don't go cry in the corner or the shower, you shift, you, 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 yeah. you, you move and you do what you have to do to make things happen, which is brilliant, which by the way, folks, this is a great reason to follow her on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, because she shares this stuff. I mean, you watch, it's, it's all happening. Not only is she announcing it's going to happen, then she shares it after it happens and she's giving you on a platter ideas. Uh, but I wanna go back to the planning of this because if I'm an agent and I'm like, okay, I've never done events, I know I need to, where should I start? Like, I can't go into 2021 and plan seven events. That's crazy. Where do you think a, an agent or a team should start? How many events in a year is realistic? Yeah, this is this is so this is perfect. And for our dear audience, please don't think I'm crazy. It really works. If it worked for me, it's gonna work for you. I promise you. You just have to trust the process. And this is like the ultimate goal of these client events. Yes, you're giving back to your community, but it gives you the organic, sincere way to market to your client database so they do not forget about you. That's a whole ultimate goal. Whole ultimate goal, right? And for example, um, Jeff, can you repeat just a question? I yeah, just yeah. So, so how many events would you recommend somebody who's just getting started doing this? Like they're just getting, so 2021, okay. they're all in, they believe what you say, they've never done it before. How many events should they plan their first okay. time doing this, their first year? Amazing. Okay, so first thing everyone needs to do, and you'll be surprised how many people don't have that. You need to have your private client group on Facebook. And if you tell me, no, Facebook is for my personal use, that's where I share my memories. That was yesterday. That was 1991. Right now, Facebook is a big marketing platform to connect and grow your business. And I'm talking about personal account, not your business account. You absolutely must have your client group on Facebook. That's going to be your main marketing tool. And it's going to be your main communication tool. Because a lot of us send out newsletters or maybe send automated text. Yeah, okay. Okay, no. The regular consumer spends on the phone more than on anything else. It's a fact. And Jeff, you would agree with that, correct? Oh, yeah, hundred percent. So, but I got a question about that. So yeah. uh, two questions. Number one, uh, first of all, very smart. I love the idea. And so what's the group called? My, my group called, we love our clients, the Lana Rodriguez group. Okay, perfect. Uh, when, so when you like uh, do a buyer's ag agreement or a listing agreement, is that when you uh, do like the exchange saying, hey, are you on Facebook? If you are, I'm going to invite you to this group. Please accept it. How do you get them to accept the, the group invite? Or, or a, lot of, a lot of times we get inquiries or somebody tags us, hey, you need to use Lana and her group. And I would connect with them. And I say, do I have your permission to add it to my client group? I just want you to see what we're all about. Because yes, we send them our client, you know, where our PCS Colorado Facebook page and reviews and whatnot. But I want them to see a real interaction because mm -hmm. I really push that community concept. And when they go there, they will see all the comments and polls and client interactions. And they're like, oh, wow. So if they really do pay attention to that, they will, they will feel comfortable moving forward with this as their, as their agent. That's smart. So you're gaining, this is prospective clients, but with existing clients, is there, is there a, a you, like I've always suggested to agents when I'm teaching social media, I'm like, I don't know why people don't put this in their buyer's agreement or they don't put it in an agreement when you first meet with a client and they decide to hire you. Like one of the questions I'm asking is name, phone number, email, what's your Facebook handle? Like we need to be friends. Instagram, yeah. what's your hand? I need to, we need to be friends because that is your, that is your ongoing billboard forever for that, for that client. So why don't, why don't agents do more of that? Is, is there a certain strategy or are you guys just kind of winging it and just adding people as you bring them in? How do you do it? Well, see my, 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 my teammates are actually making fun of me. They're like, you're such a stalker, Lana. Yes, I am. And my team, they, they know how I operate and they do it the same way. Every time we get a client, I was like, how we looked them up on Facebook. What do we know about them? For example, if we schedule the buyer's appointment and we don't know nothing about them, it's like, you need to go see if they have kids. Are they going to bring kids? Because ultimately, if they're going to bring kids, we want to have something um, tangible, maybe like a little toy or a little notepad for them to draw. So we always go above and beyond. And as far as if it's a cold lead and they're like, mm, we'll see if we're going to work with you, do not add them. Because it's a privilege to be added to your exclusive client group. And for newer agents who are watching, if you do not have the client community of 400 families leading, it's okay. You call it... I don't know, Jeff's VIP, VIP friend group, right? Or local, local, whatever, whatever. And then you add your clients, you add your supporters, you add your vendors, you add your A's, B, and C's. 
And for your audience, you, I'm sure you all of you know A, B, and C, and D. D, you delete them. They will never use you or refer you. C, uh, they may refer you once in a while. B, they refer you if, they, if you ask. And A, your ultimate refer, referral partners. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And that's really good. That's another great nugget, folks, this private Facebook group. I mean, I don't know how many people are doing that. We talked to people like Nikki Klein, who have done a really good job of like mom's groups. This yeah. is this, this to me is almost like 101. Like if I'm an agent sitting here right now thinking to myself, why in the hell don't I have that? Because we all have like email lists. We put them in our CRM, but, but folks, most people are ignoring their emails and especially when it's spam, because it is, I don't care if it's coming from follow up boss, if it's coming from a, from a CRM, it's basically spam. And I'm sure Lana probably emails her group too, because not everybody's religiously on social media like Lana and I are, but the truth is that's so smart because it's just another area to get them without being in their face. Email is putting it in their face. Facebook, they have to go on their own accord. They have to look at their notifications. They have to scroll and engage, which makes it so much, you know, less kind of salesy. And I, I love that. That's, that's, that's brilliant. Okay. So you didn't answer the question yet. How many I, events, how many events do you recommend somebody does the first year doing this? Okay. So this, I'm leading up to that. Okay, I okay. promise I'm not trying okay. to steer right. away from your question. Oh, I'll get, I'll get you. I'll get you. Don't, don't you worry. So in order for somebody to even start succeeding, they need to have a right marketing strategy for the events. Because I, I was just talking to someone and she said, I did, I'm doing this one uh, once event, event a year and I have no return. I said, well, let's talk about it. What, what systems do you have to leading up for that? Because as you know, regular consumer, you show them one time, they're going to forget. Second time, they're going to throw it away, your invite, and that's it. You have to constantly remind them. My philosophy on client events, I want to be on top of mind of my clients every time there is something big going on. And by something big, holidays, Thanksgiving, back to school, school just finished, right? Mother's Day, Easter, Valentine's Day. And it gives me a reason because I don't want to be like, hey guys, I'm your realtor, buy and sell with me. No, but hey, I'm here for you to invite you to come have a, gl a glass of wine on, on, on Valentine's Day for our happy hour, right? We're very organic. Lana's not trying to sell us not anything. She just wants to hang out. And especially- In fact, you're wanting to buy them drinks and food. Come on. Yeah. And, and, for, and for, the, for, the, for the smaller agents who maybe don't make this um, um, so much money to spend on these events, happy hours. If you're a female and you have female following, find a local place, I talk to them. Most of the time, drinks are no more than four to five dollars. Usually, your person is going to drink two drinks max, or they're going to get wasted on your on your happy hour. Do a bunch of apps, and they just all these clients are going to be happy to see you for a few hours and just have a drink and just have a girl's time. And if you're a gentleman, dudes love beer. Beer, have an agreement with a local brewery. Like, hey. I'm going to pay for the two taps of this beer. Give me some snacks and bring up the dudes, right? Mm -hmm. Like people love that kind of stuff. Well, of course, uh, with the, when it's not COVID, but this, this is how you have to see it. And right now, right, we're at what? November? Friends, there should be not an excuse why you should not host anything for your clients. November, Christmas, January, geez. May I share what are we doing to inspire some of, the, some of their agent friends? Absolutely. So I, one of the first events, what I also started was pies, pies. Mm -hmm. At first, when I was brand new by myself, I was delivering pies to people. And as a matter of fact, I delivered 85 pies in four days once. And I almost, I was so tired. I was so exhausted, but it, it paid, it paid off down the line. Now we host a pie party. And when we hosted the first pie party, the return was great, but it was not amazing. And what, not what I expected. So Jeff, would you come to a pie party if I would invite you and your lovely family? Would you come for a pie? I, I do go to one in my market for that pie, yes. You do. Mm -hmm. But you're like, huh, if I don't feel like it, I'll be okay without a pie. But I bet you're gonna come if I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna have Santa present. You can take no line, convenient Santa photos with your family and get a pie. Yeah, that certainly helps. So that's what we added. We added a Santa, so we call it Pies and Smiles with Santa. And friends listening, watching, steal it away. Pies and smiles with Santa. Nice and cheesy, but people love that. Cheesy is mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Well, in this year, we we're like, holy smokes, what are we going to do? There, we, talk, we spoke with four Santas. None of them want to do human contact. I'm like, fair, fair. One of them decided to come. 
So we were doing a drive through pie pickup party and kids are gonna drop off Santa letters to Santa. Santa is gonna wave from the distance, say, ho, ho, ho. How, how does that sound? Does that sound creative enough for 2020? That's amazing. That's yeah. Amazing. And it's, it's actually, we, we are uh, not doing a photographer because photographers usually anywhere from $1,000 to $1,000. Santa is hourly rate. I want to say like $100 an hour. Pies from Costco. Costco has the biggest, the freshest pies, friends. Don't even look anywhere else. And just a labor of our team and our hours. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. So let's, let's, um, let's digress. And you, you're just, I think you said you're going to do seven events in 2020. Yes. So you mentioned winter gala. Uh, you did the Easter, which turned into pizza delivery. Yes. Uh, you did Mother's Day, right? So Mother's Day, well. Or was we that were, the pizza delivery? Yeah, we were going to do Mother's Day brunch because usually we focus on moms because I'm a mom. But uh, this time we did a, did a taco drive through party. Oh, taco drive through That's right. Okay. And you know what? I may host maybe a separate happy hour for the ladies or something else Mother's related. But taco drive through party was such a hit. Because I did not know people love tacos so much. Yeah. It's clearly, yeah, who doesn't, right? Um, and then usually on a good year, uh, in June, we would host a movie. Because this is when kids get out of school, then transition mode, we would host a movie theater. For example, last year, we hosted a Toy Story Toy Story 2. I dressed up like a Barbie, entire team was dressed up. It was cool. We rented out three movie theaters, broken down in different time frames because people's kids' nap times vary. Well, this year I'm like, okay, movie theaters were still closed or just opening up. So I knew if I was gonna do that the return on investment would be not great. And then we were discussing what open open air, open air um, venues we have and go, mini golf came about and that worked great. People love that. Um, what and then, was next? What was after mini golf? So usually, usually I would do some kind of back to school social, usually. Well, with this particular year, um, you know, because we, like everybody were, schools in Colorado start mid-August, end of August. So everybody were watching what's going to happen with schools. I knew if I was going to do something in person, momentum wouldn't be there. So I simply prepaid two months, two months with a local ice cream creamery and coffee shop for all my clients to go and get complimentary ice cream and coffee. To be honest, it cost me $500 each month. So I prepaid $500 for month of August. Five hundred dollars for a month of September, because those ice creams—they're—they're um, they're super local. They have vegan, organic, vegetarian, whatever, and it's like one to two dollars um, per scone and a cup of coffee too, and it was great. It was great, and you know what? I'm oh my god! I have to tell you guys what I love the most about this is the tags. We told them, we told them, please go have a coffee and ice cream on us. And if you don't mind, just tag us on Facebook and check into this place. And those tags, man, they're like, hey, eating ice cream because our realtor hooked us up. And guess who's seeing that? Mm -hmm. Their entire Facebook friend community. That's huge. Yeah, that's that's the best marketing you can possibly get. Yeah. I, I, I love it. I love it. Okay, so it, I, I don't think you've still given that recommendation yet, though. So what, what would what's the number? Is it is it one a quarter? What is it? What is it that you think is realistic for someone? Uh, and, I, and then I want to and then give me that answer. And then yeah. I, I want to ask you what a good budget is uh, for these events. And then I want to ask you, are you getting help from vendors? So start with how many events? Uh, let's just say they're not Lana level. How many events is the right num the minimum? Let's do this. The minimum amount, because one's not enough. You already said that. How many is the minimum amount you should do per year to stay consistent and relevant? I think four events is a good number. Once per quarter. Four events is for, is a good number for you for one to budget accordingly and still you still do the marketing touches that I recommend, which is five marketing touches. Let's don't forget to touch on that. Um, and start usually end of end of the year we have christmas holidays right so you can choose what you can do i suggest pictures with santa because for example when geez when i try to take my kids to the mall by the time we stand in line and get to the santa my kids are freaking out one of them pukes all over me so we don't even take pictures we'll leave so if you offer this great opportunity for your client base come to my office or rent out a nice venue and have santa there have a professional photographer you just kiss babies and smile. This is awesome. You just stand there and welcome people. So during the Christmas holidays is big momentum. And then usually, you know, in real estate, the real estate market always slows down after the holidays because people recoup. So you can take it easy, maybe do some pop buys down the line. Easter, Easter is big. Easter is big. The concept of the Easter bunny, you know, there's some kids who are 
very afraid of the Easter Bunny, but there's some kids who love that. And she, I want to say word shit, but excuse me. Like you don't have to rent out the venue, go to the park, get a couple of food trucks, uh, offer some sponsorship opportunities for the food trucks, right? Or maybe discounted fee. Because this is what we do with the taco guy. Usually his tacos are $4 per taco. And I'm like, uh-uh, I'm going to promise you over a thousand tacos. We actually did 2000 tacos. And uh, he did give us a taco price, $1.50 per taco. I'm like, let's go, right? So negotiation, negotiation is the key. Get a park, spread out Easter eggs, have a couple of food trucks. People will love that. Mm -hmm. And you get your clients in a habit of, of, of this. Like, mm -hmm. I'm doing this for you guys. I love you guys. Mm -hmm. And people are like, wow. So one event, they may not come. You have to capture, you have to do the video. And Jeff, I know you're the video king and you will back me up, capture it. And then you send it off. We had a great time. Thank you for all of who are attending mm -hmm. and for all of you who couldn't make it. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Summer comes, rent out a movie theater. Like I have not gone to my, with my, with my five-year-old, maybe two times to the movie theaters. I would love to take her to see Frozen or something like that. I just didn't. I never had an opportunity and I'm just too busy. But if somebody would invite me, I would make a time and I would go. So any kind of kids movie. And, and here's a funny fact. We have clients who have kids coming with no kids as a date to our, I was like, where are your kids? It's a kid's movie. I'm like, oh, oh, they're at home with a sitter. I'm like, fair. As long as you're here, I'm happy. <laughs> right. That's right. Awesome. And <clears throat> for our dear audience watching, one thing that you guys have absolutely do, it's the biggest return ever. It's our pumpkin patch. I, I don't even know why or how, but for the last three consecutive years, our pumpkin patch packs anywhere from 600 to 700 guests. Wow. Like, People love that fall check. Like, I don't even know, like what pumpkins, like what's so special about it? I mean, I, yeah, but it's just the fall vibes. We, you can partner up with a local, local farm, right? You can order your own pumpkins. There's so many alternatives. And we, we rent out an entire pumpkin farm. They provide the food. We provide the pumpkins. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me paraphrase it. We pay for the pumpkins. So each client comes, we always have goodie bags for the kids. Cause we, I'm, I'm a bullet form delivering the tangible things for the kids so they can take it home and play with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, they eat, they enjoy all the activities because usually pumpkin patches are spread out and everybody lives with a pumpkin. How much does that cost? Because pumpkins aren't cheap. So usually, usually anywhere from $7 to $10 per person. Flat wow. cost. That's yeah. Good. Flat so cost. You're, you're probably negotiating a pretty good price with the with the establishments or the venue or the whatever, right? The phone, oh, yeah. whatever. So, so what is a good budget? Like what is something that, what is a budget that, that someone should set? So, so they're going to do four events in 2021. What is a good budget per event? So the good budget is anywhere. Well, it all depends. See, we have 400, 400 families and not all of them come, not all of them come. And sometimes they come, sometimes they don't, but kind of based on the events, we, we already know the expectation for the pumpkin patch. We predict it's going to be 500, 600, 700 people for, for the trunk tree that we kind of just throw together. It was going to be low key. I'm like, if somebody shows up, let's just like, get some B-roll of them. 400 people, one of the food trucks ran out of food. I'm like, it never happens at my party. How does this happen? I don't know, but people know, hey, Lana's throwing a party. There is going to be food. There's going to be a great time. They're coming. Yeah. And at the end, not immediately, I, I welcome people to bring the neighbor or somebody we need to meet. Hey, if you know anyone, you want our team to meet, please bring them in. Yeah. Because remember, we always welcome more fans. So, but so. Well, you know what? And let me say something about that. Because yeah. you're constantly giving, 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 it's okay to ask. And, and like you said, I think most people, I, I feel this because I give so much. I'm always willing to give my time and teach and educate and help people. The question I always get is how can I give back? Like, what can I do for you, Jeff? And that's what happens, folks. If you give consecutively over and over again, people just want to give back. So don't be afraid to ask. They're going to want to give back. So I, I absolutely love that. So uh, the, the, what, what is a good budget? Like what's a safe budget? And then do you also get your vendors to pay? So again, I get it. Like yeah, it depends yeah. on the number of people that are going to show up. Um, but what's, what's a, what can someone expect to spend? Is it 500 bucks? Is it a thousand? Is it two grand? Is it 10 grand? What is it? So the best way to look at it is account per head. On average, on average, it's $10 per person. That's what I'm kind of establish, establishing, right? Like, for example, for our pie event right now coming up, I went a little over the budget because prior we were doing just a pumpkin pie. Pumpkin, pumpkin pie Costco is $5.99. So it's controlled cost, super cheap. And it's like three and a half pounds. Dude, it's delicious and it's so big. 
And well, I wanna I wanna spread out because. Ha, I'm a bad, a bad budgeter. So I just like, so now we added pecan pies. That is, I want to say it's like 13 or $12. Apple pie, 12 or $13. Still pumpkin pies. And then we added bottles of wine. Bottles of wine will be, uh, I want to say two or three bucks. We're kind of getting a bulk deal. And then we're going to do a goodie bags for the kids. So my cost per client is probably going to be $15 in this event. But usually you want to keep it at $10, $10 per client. And friends, if you're thinking like, well, I just got into real estate and I'm not, I don't sell enough homes to do that. You can do this on a smaller scale possible and I promise you it will work. For example, the good start is to have a wine and cheese night at your own house. You go to Costco, you buy all the great wine. Okay, I am like, I'm a big fan of Costco, as you can see, and the Costco wine is great. And they have these amazing cheese platters and these appetizers, right? So you can actually, cater this amazing reception at your house with with your lady clients ladies guys dudes you know dude, dude clients and it's going to be a couple hundred bucks but you, they're going to get that one-on-one -on -one experience with you you can start anywhere from there you can go to local businesses and explain them what you're trying to do and local businesses most of them not all of them but most of them love to support you they're like yeah let's partner up let me come up with this menu please go ahead and bring your clients yes i'm going to give you the discount so there are so many ways to negotiate, right? And uh, as long as as long as you have a vision for this and you want to do this, do it. Do it on a smaller scale, but still do it, and then add on add on down the line. And to 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 bring up the vendors, no, we have not been consistent with asking vendors to pay. Wow. And I I know a lot of great agents are not like they they have under vendor partnerships. Well, in my case, number one, I feel bad asking people for money. You know, I feel like if they're vendors and they're like, well, Lonnie is doing all these things, let me contrib contribute, and maybe they do, or maybe they don't. But ultimately, it will be helpful if, you know, we have a vendor who would come in like, hey, let's split it 50-50, but we don't want to cross, cross a gray line, and I also don't want to, like, ask for it. So it's been usually our, our expense. And uh, just to give you an idea, 2019, which was last year, our event expense was $80,000. On all of the events. Yeah, 2018, that's when we had our great Gala Gatsby party and all the other events. It was almost $100,000. But for everyone watching, like, oh, my God, what? No, friends, absolutely. Like, So we do 200 transactions a year plus, and we are uh, in a ranking with the teams who do straight up Zillow leads. And they're killing it with Zillow, but they pay also 30 to 40 grand a, a, a month, a month in Zillow leads, right? Yeah. yeah where I'm a firm believer, give me all the money and I'm going to invest it back into my client community. Sure, sure. Yeah. Because this is people who love, like, and trust you, yeah. right? They just, they do. You don't have to pay for their loyalty. They already like you and they're going to yeah. refer your business anyway. Yeah, those are the best. Those are the best, the best ones. But hands down, no, the people who are your raving fans, that's the bottom line. Um, I love that. Now, and I do, I will say this, listen, if you're in Colorado Springs and you're in mortgage or title or, or insurance or uh, inspections, any of that stuff, I'm telling you right now, hello, I would be calling Lana to bring her value to say, I would love to contribute. And, and no, you're probably not going to contribute 50%, but contribute anything. Look how thankful she's going to be. She's going to loop you in and I bet you you get business. There was a commercial for the Lana Rodriguez team right there because Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you, my people man. Are, I mean, you. listen, if we if we were mortgage, if we if my company was there, we would be helping you with this stuff because it's a no-brainer. That's just that's just silliness and you're doing it at such a high level. You're doing my job for me, right? All I'm doing is showing up, helping contribute to it. And that contribution is going to get you is it's going to get it come back. Right. Uh, I don't know why a lot of people in the industry don't get that, but man, it is, it's a powerful thing. You, you have shared so many nuggets. I love interviewing you because uh, although on some side of the coin, you're all over the place, which is fun. That's your personality. That's just but, how I am. I'm sorry, guys. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. Because you, I mean, go back and listen to this again. I'm, I was already thinking I'm going to share this uh, as a value. I don't share a lot of the podcasts, uh, to be honest with you, even though I'm hosting most of them, but some of them are just really good that I want to share with my loan officers and say, this is awesome. Like, listen to this, uh, share it with your realtors. They need to hear this stuff because every, somebody's going to gain a nugget from this. Just, just the way that you have figured out how a to use, like, this is the way you do business. Just like we were interviewing Ken Pozak yesterday who crushes it on YouTube. That that's his strategy. It blows my mind and it blows a lot of realtors mind. Lana Rodriguez strategy is client events, folks. This is 
this we're not making this crap up. We're not just feeding you a bunch of BS to give you content. This is real. This is real. And then and, and yep. you don't, who, how many of you right now by a show of hands? No, I can't see any of them. How many of you can say you love buying Zillow leads, RDC leads, any lead of any kind? How many of you love door knocking? How many of you love cold calling? How many of you love doing those things? And I bet you if there's 500 people listening to this, two people might raise their hands and they're probably full of crap. Uh, so this is the stuff. This is awesome. Lana, this has been fantastic. Do you have anything uh, to, to kind of share in closing or kind of to, you know, give them, give them um, anything that you just suggest? Sure. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. You are, we're just preaching to myself and you're preaching to the, to the, to the masses, but for, for, if you are the lender officer, title rep, or owner broker, this client event concept doesn't have to apply only in real estate sales. Uh, we're going to bring up, uh, for example, Sam Karamian with a, with a big block. You know, they, they have grown and they're now in the top Fortune 500 companies, and they do the same client, client party event with, their, with the agents they attract. And actually, when I was part of Remax for five years, in my first five years of business, you know, every every quarter they was throw, they were throwing something for for the clients, and I like that. It made me kind of feel appreciated and special. And even though it was like a little barbecue with some hot dogs that I would not eat, but just this concept that oh my god, they're doing this for me, and it just was just a way to my heart. And uh, friends, they like we are not lying to you. It's a real concept. We're all doing it. And I'm gonna finish up with a, my favorite quote, and goes like this: People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Say that again. People don't know. <laughs> Hold on. Jeez. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Ooh, that should be on the wall of the entryway to your office. It will be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Those so many and here, so yep. many others. I love it. I love it. Lana, if people want to get a hold of you, which I bet you somebody does or somebody's, how do they find you? What's the best way to get a hold of you? Yes, great. Uh, Facebook, please message me on Facebook. Add me. I'm going to reply to you, not right away, but I promise I will reply to you. Instagram, the Lana Rodriguez group. And of course, follow me on TikTok, the Lana Rodriguez group, uh, the Lana Rodriguez handle. I love it. I love it. And if and is the best way to get a hold of you just to DM, DM you on in, uh, any of those platforms? Absolutely. Would love to connect and would love to help to help to see you succeed in 2021. I know it's going to be our year and we're all going to kill it. That is very refreshing, folks. You should all take a page out of Lana's book. A, the energy, uh, B, the ideas and strategies, and C, just the willingness to share. She is so, so awesome. Lana Rodriguez, Lana Rodriguez Group, Colorado Springs, Colorado. You are amazing. I appreciate you, and thank you so much for being on. Jeff, it's my honor. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, everyone. Agents Podcast.